To continue our exploration of three-dimensional arrays, we're going to work this example, which is arraying balconies around a curved surface of a building. Now, you can look at this and see that it suggests a polar array approach, because we have a circular behavior here down on the x and y plane. And then we'd like to repeatedly array those objects up along the z-axis using what are called levels to get that result. So let's see how it's done. I'll simply undo this and we'll go back to the first balcony and we can go ahead and kick off our polar array up here from the ribbon. We'll now select the original balcony, finalize that, and we'll go ahead and select the centering point of this circular wall to form the basis for our polar array. So now we can go ahead and as we just rough it in, we can see that we've established the polar behavior in the X and Y plane. Now we did go ahead and compute this because we already know our spatial relationships for the building. So we do know that we're going to have six of these balconies and they're going to be arrayed through 65 degree sweep. We also know that we're going to have 22 stories worth of balconies. So that's going to be levels because levels function along the Z axis. So we'll go ahead and select the levels here, 22 of them at an even spacing of 10 feet. All we have to do now is accept the results. So it's real straightforward, polar array concepts that you already know propagated up and along the z-axis using a concept that are called levels. And of course, you could always edit this by simply double clicking it and accessing all of the parameters that you would need to see here in the ribbon, just like we edited 2D examples earlier in the video series. So it's very straightforward to do. Next up, we're going to look at combining some elevation offsets to make our polar arrays even a little bit more complicated than this.